Welcome, friends, to this time of guided prayer. I'm Pastor Dale Peterson, Senior Pastor at Faith Lutheran in Waconia, Minnesota. I'm glad you have joined us today. Welcome back to those who have been practicing with me for a while. And if you're new to this practice, it's a time of restful attentiveness, a time to concentrate on our relationship with God, the time we call selfish yet humble, that we are selfish in that so many times so many of us are doing for others, concerned about others, and don't often take enough time just for ourselves, for our own spiritual growth, for our own health, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional health. And so this is a time to connect with God, a time of restful attentiveness where we listen to God's voice. We're attentive to that spirit, that spirit that intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. And if you have been practicing with me for a while, you know we begin with deep breathing. For those who are new, this breathing, deep breathing, long, full inhales, maybe to the count of four or five, and long, slow exhales, maybe to the count of six or seven, these inhales to receive, exhales to let go. Inhaling the breath. Same word for God's breath in the creation story where God breathed God's breath into the first humans is pneuma. Same word as spirit or breath, God's breath, God's spirit, the pneuma of God entered the humans and God's spirit lived in them just as God's spirit lives in us. So know that God is within you as your breath, as close as your heartbeat. God's spirit surrounds you like the air around you. And so just breathe deep, full breaths. Knowing that these breaths help us to relax, they reduce stress. They help us to hear better and think more clearly. So just breathe deeply. Posture is also important, so I invite you to rest in the chair, let your body weight sink. I close my eyes for much of our session together and invite you, if that feels comfortable, that's authentic for you to let your eyes drift close and just let my voice be background. Let the spirit lead. It's more comfortable to have eyes open. Maybe you watch the fire behind me and just let your thoughts drift. Fire, a sign of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down to those gathered together and sat like tongues of fire, bringing God's presence in a new and powerful way, a way that enabled them to share the good news of Jesus Christ with people from all over the world. So I invite you to allow that spirit to rest on you, within you, to be attentive to it in this session as we call it a time of Lectio Divina, divine reading. I'll read through the passage three times, the first time just to get the big picture. Second time, I'll read it through, I invite you to see if there's a word, an image, a phrase that sticks with you. And the third time through, it'll be silence following, and again to see if that word or image or phrase, a picture, a word from God, the Spirit brings to your heart and soul, and just let it sit there. Let it crystallize like a, a gem, and hold it near for a couple days. Today I'll read from John chapter 15, Gospel of John 
15, 1 through 11, again, inviting you to just let the words soak in. Hear what might be word from God for you today. Jesus is speaking and he says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. And we do get pruned as those branches, things that are not helpful. Sometimes in spiritual practice or in yoga, talk about letting go of that which no longer serves. Letting go. Let go of that which no longer serves. And maybe that's the word for you today. Something you just really do need to let go of. Let the pruning happen. And you can let that go and give that over to God. Jesus used the word abide so many times in this paragraph. Abide in me as I abide in you. And one way that that word abide can be translated is make your home in. So Jesus would be saying, make your home in me as I make my home in you. Other places that we can change that around and use that brief phrase instead of the word abide. Jesus says, those who make their home in me and I in them bear much fruit. He also says, if you make your home in me and my words make my home in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete is how that paragraph ends. And Jesus here, really that joy that Jesus is talking about is not necessarily the absence of sorrow, but the presence of God that we are not promised happiness all the time. We go through times of suffering, never promised that we won't suffer or hurt, but always the promise that God is present with us in our suffering and in our happiness and in our celebration, that God is present. So this passage lifts up this connection for us to be connected to the vine. Jesus says, I am the vine, we are the branches. And so to stay connected, part of what you're doing now in this spiritual exercise is to be connected to the vine, to be rooted in that love of Jesus, to be connected and to rest. And Jesus also makes the point of our gift, our privilege of being able to bear fruit. 
that as we are connected to Jesus' love, we can share that love with others. As we are connected with Jesus' inclusive grace, we can be inclusive of others and share that grace. As we are connected, make our home in Jesus, connected to that vine, receiving love and forgiveness, acceptance, we can share that with others. We have the privilege of making this such a much better world by being connected to the vine, to God's divine love, connected through the Spirit that Jesus promised, the Holy Spirit that is within us and around us, that fills us and speaks to us. So I invite us now to be attentive to that Spirit Take some deep, full breaths. To hear the scripture passage and let the words just soak in like rain to dry ground. To nourish the soil of your soul. To feed the seed of faith that it might grow. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Just rest. Let the spirits surround you and fill you. Jesus says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Or make your home in my love. We pray and trust that your home is a, a safe place, a secure place, a place where you can rest. At this place, in this time, you would know that Jesus looks upon you with eyes of compassion. 
and accepts you, understands you, forgives you, promises to be with you no matter what. And when we abide in God's love, we abide in God's grace, God's unconditional, unending, undeserved love for each one of us, no matter what, forever. That's making our home in God, in Jesus. Home in that forgiveness, that safe place to return to and to go out from. That we might bear much fruit, that we might go out and make this world a more Christ-like place where we might bring the kingdom of God, that is, where God reigns out into the world as we pray in the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we are invited to bear fruit, to share this love that if we just keep it in, keep it to ourselves, doesn't grow. But the more we share, the more it grows. What a beautiful thing. Abide in my love, says Jesus. Make your home in my love. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I am them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.